Hey everyone, my name is Love Agarwal and I'm a data platform solution engineer for IBM. And today I'm very excited to talk about the newest release of our Enterprise Insights platform, Cloud Pack for Data version 3.5. And to help me discuss what's new, I'd like to welcome Hemant Manda, Executive Director of Offering Management for Cloud Pack for Data. Hey Hemant, thank you for joining us today. How are you? I'm pretty good, thanks Love. Great, so Hemant, for some time now, we've been discussing the power of Cloud Pack for Data as a true end-to-end -end hybrid data platform that can help enterprises uh, collect data no matter where it lives, organize it for use, and then analyze it, right, using the best AI and machine learning tools. Um, this new version only enhances all those areas, and I understand that a lot of these changes were made from the perspective of reducing complexity and accelerating innovation. So that's what we'll focus on today. Sound good? That sounds good, perfect to me. Okay, great. So Himant, when we talk about any new platform, a big concern is around internal skills and maintenance tasks. Um, we already know this is a lot more amplified with purely open source solutions. So what changes exist in version 3.5 that help customers streamline installation, administration, and maintenance? So now, I mean, talent and skills are uh, the biggest drivers of IT costs for enterprises. Uh, they also play a key role in competitive differentiation, and we hear this from all of our customers. The latest version of CloudPack Data simplifies and automates the administration and maintenance tasks while delivering an enhanced integrated user experience. Um, I can spend a few minutes uh, going through some of these key enhancements. Um, number one is automation. Uh, CloudPack Data Operator, based on Red Hat OpenShift Operator Framework, simplifies uh, installations, uh, lifecycle management, such as uh, automated provisioning, configuration management, seamless patching, upgrades, and scaling with operational knowledge built in. Uh, it also enables uh, autopilot management, uh, automated data discovery, and quick, quick scan features. All of these have received significant upgrades in uh, the latest uh, 3.5 release um, for uh, scalability and performance. Uh, finally, the platform now includes uh, workflows to manage and uh, automate your business processes. So this is number one, automation across the board, right? Number two is uh, uh, simplified administration to manage and monitor uh, Cloud Pack for data deployment. So the platform management uh, capabilities um, and uh, a single view provides a bird's eye picture of uh, all the services service instances, environments, and ports deployed in Cloud Pack Data. It highlights any unhealthy or, or pending ports, includes drill downs for proactive troubleshooting, and allows administrators to set the resource quotas by individual service. The version 3.5 also includes a new concept called deployment spaces, uh, which is a collection of runtimes, making it easier for operation engineers and administrators to manage jobs and online deployments, regardless of where they're running. Uh, so the latest version also includes uh, um, a new uh, command line and APIs. Uh, these are extremely important in automating and managing service instances, uh, enabling programmatic access, um, such as backup and restore, and also import export of metadata, et cetera. So in, gen in, in overall, um, I think there's a lot of simplification as well as a lot of net new capabilities added to be able to administer the platform. That's number two. Number three is um, integrated user experience. Um, we have significantly enhanced our navigation menu based on a lot of research, like over 10,000 hours spent our design team. We have this concept of platform connections so that now your connections to data sources are managed not by individual service, but at the platform level. Now, we also have the concept of uh, an integrated uh, database console so that you can manage and administer all of your databases from a single console. Plus, we have a lot of net new capabilities around uh, guided walkthroughs so that user onboarding becomes a lot easier. Uh, so these are just, uh, I would say, like a, a glimpse of what we are providing. Uh, all of these, in my opinion, will drive significant cost savings because you're automating things, you're making it easier to administer, and then you're making it easier for users to onboard and making them a lot more productive. Right, right, and I, I really think that last part of the uh, last part of that is is key. Um, having those guided uh, walkthroughs and and allowing those users to onboard 
because you know you have all these powerful capabilities but you know if the users don't know where to get to, you know how to get to those features and how to use them um then it, it's a little bit lost right exactly you're right i mean that's that's why we uh, try to basically embrace the guided workflows and product tools right we are enhancing also with some um, um in product learning experience so that it becomes a lot easier for for users and customers to essentially uh, embrace the platform. Right, right. So moving on to our next topic, um, our customers have always demanded flexibility when building machine learning pipelines, right? So what are we doing to improve the IBM machine learning tools uh, that are available on the platform, such as you know Watson Machine Learning or Auto AI? Uh, and secondly, how are we supporting more flexible deployment in environments? So um, um, AI is uh, a, a huge focus area for IBM, and we've made significant enhancements to this in our latest release, 3.5. Uh, there are three key areas that I would like to highlight, which uh, I believe are substantial. Uh, number one is auto AI, which allows customers to build AI models uh, leveraging AI that complements data scientists. It also helps uh, sophisticated business users to build models. Um, what we've done in 3.5 is now we are supporting multiple data sources so that you can build these automated AI models leveraging multiple data sets as opposed to a single data set. This uh, is a significant enhancement as is requested by our customers. And number two is federated learning. This is a tech review, but uh, this is a significant enhancement. I believe we are one of the very few vendors, if not the only vendor who's doing this. This enables us to build AI models across uh, distributed data sets. Uh, this essentially means that we don't need to look at the data that is distributed either across companies or across organizations. Um, a, a, an example use case would be um, anti-money laundering, uh, different banks, uh, go through this issue at a different level of complexity. There might be nuances here. By leveraging federated learning, a group of banks can get together and uh, try to uh, try to basically learn from what's going on in their individual banks without actually sharing the data and then um, aggregate all the learnings right, in terms of AI into a sophisticated model that uh, taps into the learnings across the banks and that can be now leveraged by all these banks, right? This is one use case, but there are a number of use cases that benefit by this federated learning capability. And finally, we now have a new service in uh, Cloud Pack Data called uh, Watson Machine Learning. It's a deep learning uh, service for data scientists um, to optimize uh, training models, ensure continuous model training and monitoring. It comes with many optimizations that um, accelerate performance, improve resource utilization, and help administer and manage GPUs at scale. Um, so net-net, significant enhancements with respect to AI. Yeah, yeah, and especially that federated learning capability sounds really powerful. You know, it seems like you get all the benefits of the insights by sharing data, but you don't lose any of the privacy by, you know, having sensitive data leak out, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And then on the auto AI component as well, you know, I think it's important to just point out there that, yes, you know, we have all these great technical capabilities, but that also feeds into a, a strategic component as well, where we're seeing a lot of our customers who are developing, you know, true modern data science practices. They're leveraging these automated tools to help build, you know, baseline models, right, with the use of junior data analysts or data scientists, and then letting some of their senior folks you know, take that handoff and then do more uh, complicated and custom uh, work on those same models, right? That's absolutely true. I mean, I think our motto here is to basically democratize uh, AI. Exactly. Uh, so that everybody can tap into this. Um, and uh, as you rightly pointed out, it's not only helps junior data scientists and sophisticated business users to start building models, but also complement senior data scientists because now they don't need to go through the whole manual process, right? It's, it's more of a automated automation tool that can, they can tap into. Exactly, exactly. We're bringing a lot of flexibility into the platform. Um, and then on the theme of flexibility, you know, we've always been proud of our ability to partner with ISVs and foster an ecosystem uh, of third party capabilities that integrate into the, you know, the same platform, right? Um, and there's new services being added all the time. Uh, can you share with us some of the new services that IBM has developed and maybe uh, you know a really interesting one that one of our partners have developed for the platform. Yeah, absolutely. Love. I mean, uh, ecosystem is um, extremely critical component of Cloud Pack data. 
And uh, we definitely have a number of new services, uh, both from IBM and third party ISVs as part of version 3.5. On the IBM front, uh, we have uh, three new services. Uh, number one is uh, Open Pages. It's a premier governance risk and uh, compliance offering that uh, complements our uh, data governance capabilities. Uh, number two is uh, Open Data for Industries. It's a new solution for oil and gas vertical. It's based on um, OSDU uh, open standards, allowing customers uh, to interoperate and exchange data sets across a wide spectrum of data types, such as uh, well logs, seismic files, mm -hmm. Well bore and seismic uh, DDMS sensor data, etc. This is uh, this is very very specific to oil and gas industry. Uh, the third one is uh, knowledge accelerators that uh, includes uh, pre-created and curated industry specific content uh, for a number of industry verticals, including uh, energy and utilities, healthcare, insurance, and uh, financial services. Uh, these help with jump starting implementations while ensuring. Um, compliance support for uh, industry standards and regulations. Uh, so these are some of the new services from an IBM perspective. Um, they, there are uh, 50 plus third party ISV services today on Cloud Pack for Data. Um, nine new ISVs are added as part of 3.5. Uh, notable among them are uh, Enterprise DB Postgres, a popular open source database, Hazelcast, an in-memory data grid for caching, and um, Trilio, a cloud native backup and recovery solution uh, tested and certified for cloud pack data. Um, so again, I think significant enhancements both from IBM as well as from third party. Also, I would like to mention that we have 31 plus industry accelerators. Uh, most of these are free to use. These are pre-built um, capabilities, right? That customers can leverage to onboard and uh, get a jump start from an implementation perspective. And these are distributed across uh, different industry verticals. Um, addressing specific use cases. Right, right. You know, and I really think that's what makes IBM the key differentiator there. Um, not only have we developed this broad platform with, you know, the best in class technical capabilities, but as IBM, we also have a deep understanding of each of these verticals, right? And, and we're able to kind of prepackage solutions that work for those specific industries, right? So I think, you know, uh, combining both of those, it, it makes for a very attractive platform. Yes, absolutely. I think, I think our, again, I think our objective here is to be an open platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to include IBM content, open source content, and third-party content, and tightly integrate it and make it available on any, any, any cloud, right? So that you give the flexibility to the customer in terms of what they want to pick and choose. And while we do the hard work of integrating it and supporting it across multiple deployment factors. Exactly, exactly. Well, Himan, thank you for your time today. Uh, I'm very excited to see what our customers out there uh, are able to build with our platform. And if anyone watching would like to learn more about Cloud Pack for Data, please feel free to reach out to me and thank you for watching.